All right, a very good morning to you. And thank you so much once again for joining us on the program. It is a platform, the pinnacle of all this culture. Like I promised you on Monday, we'll be back again today, Wednesday, the 5th of June, 2024. Hi, doing well. Now, the quiet governance keeps uh, picking the mind of an average Nigerian. Hence, the pressure on the leaders to lead with good policies to the benefit of Nigerians. Aba being the commercial nerve of the state requires all the attention needed to maximize the economic potentials of the city. But with recent security lapses witnessed a few days ago, effort must be made to ensure peace and tranquility twice again in Aba. On the platform this morning, the lawmaker representing Aba North and South Federal Constituency, Honorable Alex Equator, will be my guest on the program. Uh, to look at issues, let us look at development in Aba, especially where it affects security and welfare of the people. Welcome once again. My name is Ginika Oluaha. Let's pause now to bring you the political update. When we come back, you meet my guest. Stay with us. All right. Thank you so much, Wisdom, for that update. Welcome back to the program. It is the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. I told you before we went on that break, our focus will be on Aba. Aba is the commercial nerve center of the state and uh, the south is as a whole. And uh, of course, you know, the development that happened many days ago. We'll look at all that vis-a-vis uh, -vis the welfare of the people of Aba. And joining me virtually to talk about this issue is the member representing Aba Norton South Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives, Honorable Alex Ikweche. He joins me virtually this morning. Good morning, Honorable. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Good morning, Dinika. How are you? I'm doing very well. And you? Very well. Thanks for asking. All right. Good morning, viewers. All right. Okay, so, um, Honorable, with uh, what is happening in Aba, I mean, uh, let us, maybe you can just uh, tell us the development, the security situation in Aba, what it's like after that ugly situation where government actually attacked and killed five military personnel. You know, and uh, the fear of uh, possible reprisal from the military. Um, tell us, you are the representative of the people of Aba, uh, Aba North and South. What is the situation right there in Aba now? Well, thank you very much, Inika. Um, you do agree with me that the situation, uh, the uh, incident that took place on the 30th, mm. is one that uh, I would consider very reprehensible. Uh, it's a move. It affects the entire uh, citizenry of this state. It affects not just the uh, the city of Aba, which happens to be the commercial nerve center of this state, and even the southeast, but it affects the entire nation mm -hmm. because um, the monies that we have lost to the the government and the individuals have lost is overwhelming. It's something that we should condemn very strongly, mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, you know, people do what they do, and uh, we don't yet understand the rationale behind what they do. Mm. Anyway, um, we are pleased to have a governor that is very proactive, Dr. Alex Oti, a governor that is proactive, a governor that understands what it means for leadership to be, you know, handled hands-on. Mm. Uh, um, when this whole thing took place, of course, we began to reach out to to the heads of the military in Abuja, the chief of army staff, the uh, GO general uh, in um, the GOC at the uh, Enugu Cantonment, uh, the, uh, uh, of course, the commanding officer at Asa, and also the brigadier commander at uh, Ohafia, to find a way to douse the tension and uh, also empathize with them. The loss of their, their personnel, uh, mm -hmm. responsible Nigerians that have sacrificed their lives to, to God's work and are here on earth to protect and to serve uh, the Nigerian populace. Mm -hmm. um, these are human beings that also have time, also going through this hardship and motivation that everyone in the country is going through. Mm -hmm. uh, their case is not uh, peculiar, their case is somewhat, in fact, their case is absolutely similar. Mm -hmm to what everyone is going through. So uh, we have to be able to uh, calm their nerves to avoid a reprisal attacks. And uh, the government was doing his deed. I was doing my deed. And some other well-meaning Nigerian audience were also, you know, 
reaching out to the appropriate courts to see that uh, there isn't any form of reprisal of attacks. Okay. Eventually, that was um, actualized. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the about populist now that were slightly recalcitrant about uh, 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 um, you know taking a step back mm -hmm. for the minute to be able to do the work. We were able to come down and also appeal to them to uh, at least. Uh, uh, stay away from from the streets where these things happened mm. uh, for a while, so that it can be sorted. Uh, eventually, uh, the people listened, the military listened, and uh, they remained peaceful. Um, you you recall the the incident in Delta and the way the military handled it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Abba has remained calm. The people are going about their businesses now. But of course, intelligence work is going on. The governor is on top of the matter, um, working with security agencies and agents mm. to see that these individuals, uh, are, 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 uh, the situation is addressed. These individuals found and uh, to book. Mm. Um, I, can, I can only share uh, uh, but a few information okay. online with you because, you know, this is... But I can assure you that the governor is on top of the situation. I had a long uh, standing meeting with him. Okay. Okay. For close to two hours, we were conversed intensely on the steps to take. You see, we don't want the situation in most parts places like Olo, mm. in Ishiara, in Ambra State, to become the situation in It's going to be sensitive you can hear about uh, uh, terrorism and attacks and in, and in different places, but you don't hear such things in Lagos. Mm. You don't hear about such things in Lagos. Mm. So, Abba is more or less our own terrorist in Lagos. So, we need to understand that we are our problem, because I believe that some of the people that did this had sensitivity of, you know, that that part of this city. So, they we have a place to stand. It affects everyone. It affects the state. It affects the people on the street. It affects the uh, school. It everyone. So we don't. Okay. It, uh, it has to end, and it has to end immediately. Okay, honorable. Uh, I don't know the location you are right now. Though we are really struggling. Uh, to, okay, okay. We are really struggling to get a clear. I mean, the network appears to be shaky. Where I don't know if it's where you are or where I am, but uh, we are really struggling oh. to get uh, clear. Can you hear me better now? Yes, I can hear you very well now. So, um, okay, great. Honorable, can you confirm to us uh, that there is no tense atmosphere right now in Aba over that particular incident? Well, of course, when it happened, it was quite tense, but that is that was when I had to, you know, come out to okay. reach out to the military and reach out to the to our bar uh, citizens to talk to them, uh, for them to allow the police to do their work, yeah. and also to empathize and sympathize with them, yeah. uh, given the fact that these are also individuals that are going through the hardships that everyone seems to be going through and have families, and don't have wives, they have kids. Of course, when that conversation, when I had a conversation with our, you know, beloved Abba citizens, they understood very perfectly where I was coming from. And of course, I also spoke to the military to, um, to of course, take into cognizance that, you know, the, the people that we bear the brunt are not the, are not the perpetrators of this very heinous crime. And, and I believe we understood ourselves that people are, about, are going about their businesses. Okay. But don't get me wrong, there are uh, intelligence support, like I said, going. Okay. there are a few people that have been, you know, red lighted. Mm -hmm. And these people, uh, you know, there are certain interrogations going on, like I said, there's just a few. I can't say much because okay. this is a okay. sensitive situation. But others have gone about their business and they be careful where this incident took place. Mm -hmm. Um, initially, the military barricaded the home of Obi Kabia, but I went to a conversation with them on Friday. I pleaded with them for them to leave the space and left the space the next day. Uh, and 
so knowing about their businesses in Obika, they also visited Potakot Road, visited uh, Ugwa Road, where they all have many, all the areas where military checkpoints and violence has been done, and visited all those places, addressed the military, addressed the crowd, that, you know, about people, like they say, Abana, hmm. they would gather, until you change the way, they would have a while, they would come back. So I explained to them that this is not, um, this is not child's play. This is a matter of life and death. Hmm. And people understand that these people are not so, you know, they're not playing games. They're not happy about what's going on. Uh, but uh, right now I can assure you that ABA is good for business and people are talking about going about their businesses open again. Okay. Uh, the mates are open again. The military have uh, removed their barricades and everybody's about going about their business. But intelligence work okay. and interrogations are ongoing. So maybe in the nearest future, maybe as soon as possible, we'll get to these people that actually perpetrated this crime. Well, you know, like I said, mm. this is, um, the military is basically fighting, they don't know who they're fighting, because the people that come do these things come out like, you know, regular people that go about their businesses, mm. they show, they kill the military because they have forms, yeah. you know, they, they are identifiable. Um, but, you, you, like I said, things are ongoing, investigation is ongoing, and things, uh, right. report is trickling in, and uh, very soon, like, Mm. individuals will be identified. But I would also like to ask you to probably ask I can say it's ours. Abba is ours. Alibo is ours. The site is ours. It's ours. Mm. People don't say you don't shit where you eat. You don't quit where you eat. Mm. This is where we live. This is where our parents live. Our sisters, uncles, cousins do business. We cannot continue to shoot ourselves on the foot. Individuals that were actually, most of them are from Adelaide. Now, what is the significance? What is the motive of this attack that was done? Is it to build the South East or to destroy the South East? So we are yet to understand the, the intentions for which this crime, this heinous crime was committed. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, let's now look at the wider aspect to this particular issue we are talking about. That's insecurity. With this development in Abba, recall that before this incident happened, uh, there, you will agree with me that Southeast was becoming a bit peaceful, you know, in terms of crime and criminality and the menace of the unknown gunmen. You know, but after this, uh, the incident of Ubikabia in Abba happened, um, are you, are you seeing a possible rising wave of criminality in that kind of form? I mean, attacking personalities or, I mean, security agency agents, you know, in the southeast. And what do you think should be done in this regard to address it? Well, like you said, um, Abia State and parts of the southeast has been on the news for the right reasons. This is one of the big components of. Uh, of development and prosperity when a, a, a state or a government or a people identify challenges and begin to take incremental steps to ensure that those challenges are addressed and addressed exactly and the uh, um, uh, geometric power that has really uh, put smiles in of Abians, southeasterners nations that's what I hear. I mean, uh, people coming from London, America, different parts of the world, telling me that you know we are on the trajectory of prosperity, that they are happy. People want to come back here, buy land, build hotels, mm. and invest again. You see what is going on with our brothers and sisters that have invested very heavily mm. in those seas, of which I'm one of them. Yes. Lagos and Abuja, houses being pulled down, people feel that they are being targeted. So, uh, Abians. Um, South Easterners want to come back to the Southeast and develop the Southeast. Mm. But with the um, development of, uh, of the 30th of uh, mm. put us on a very shaky uh, pedestal. Mm. And, um, you know, people, of course, bad news travels very fast. Yeah. And uh, these types of uh, incidents is bad for business. Mm. I mean, nobody will want to come and invest money where people are being killed. It's, it's, it's simple mathematics. I don't know the guys that do these things. I don't know what they're, like I said, what their motives are. People want to come and invest money in a city that you know something can shut down. So it's, 
um, it's bad for us. It's bad for the South East, like I said earlier. Mm. But, um, like I also said earlier, mm. we have a governor that is intentional with his actions. We have a governor that is intentional about governance or uh, running government. We have a governor that understands that, okay, security, is a pivotal um um uh, uh, uh is it all right uh, we have honorable equator back on the line uh honorable go ahead you were actually making a point as how as regards to how we are going to restore peace and the southeast yes so like i was saying mm. we have a governor that is intentional mm. uh we have a governor that understands what it means to a government that is ready to run a government we have a governor that is to put up a state mm. and uh, leaving the southeast back on the map mm. um aba used to be referred as the japan of africa about at some point became a place where you only have okada riders and keke riders a bunch of people drinking smoking. Mm. <laughs> you can see that our uh, interstate um, um routes that connect uh, our state of Abia to other states like Potakot Road, um, Ekotet Benue, and uh, Enugu and all that are being worked on. So I strongly believe that with the intentions of the governor, that this state will bounce back to what it used to be. Already business has commenced again in Aba. Aba is calm again, is safe again, and um, the military is uh, uh, combat ready. They are at alert. They the DSS, all the security apparatus we have in the state, uh, at alert, intelligence report is going on. Mm. There's something that either affected, shook the entire day, but then three weeks ago, two killed, and then five officers killed. So the men, okay. okay. Uh, so if you can, can you hear me uh yes but your line is actually breaking um i don't know what exactly is the problem but go ahead let's see if we can you know i can hear you go ahead okay so uh can you hear me i, I can don't know hear, i can hear you now okay so um the military mm. of course is their part to ensure that uh you know the environment is 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 kept safe okay and then it's doing uh, her part as well. Uh, so I, I am sure that uh, things will begin to pick up again. This barely happened four or five days ago, yeah. but already business has commenced again. Mm. And I'm also certain that the people that did this possibly did not understand or know mm. the effect, the negative effect that this would draw. So wherever they are, I'm sure they are probably regretting uh, doing what they did. But I can assure you that in, in less than no time, everything will, will back to place okay so uh honorable let's go national now um the organized labor just relaxed its uh nationwide strike that was uh, yesterday over the issue of uh, national minimum wage i understand that the national assembly came in at some point led by the uh, senate president uh, joined by the speaker of house of reps now should the national what should national assembly doing at this point you know to make sure that this issue of workers welfare and the issue of uh, national minimum wage is implemented well you know that the minimum wage that was posed you see the, the problem of nigeria is quite um it's, it's simple it's not something that is entirely entirely complicated uh um, the, the way is something that you know when what a bag of food for mm. close to it that, and then you're paying someone someone thirty thousand. how do you expect the person to survive mm. and then we're not talking about the high cost of transportation high cost of fuel high cost of electricity mm. high cost of but literally everything a country mm. has gone up but like i always say i've been a strong um leader of uh, I've been in the forefront of the crusade advocating that power, 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 mm. uninterrupted electricity should be established. Every other thing in this country should be abandoned and electricity should be tackled. If electricity is tackled, people will have means of subsistence. There is a country with over 250 million people. People can set up small factories, small industries, and people can survive without equipment. 
actually coming in to to fund people. Mm. Uh, this is what China did. Mm. This is uh, Chairman Mao in the 50s. Mm. This is what uh, Stalin did in the 40s. Yeah. This is with, uh, Eisenhower did in the 30s in the United States. Mm. So in a country where you have 250 million people and 85% of what you import is uh, is what you consume is imported, yeah. there is no way currency will rise, there is no way our currency will be strong, there is no way government can sustain. All these things that God is doing, I stress to concern, I've been saying it and I will keep saying it uh, because, I mean, like I always say I'm here to to speak for the people and not to please or appease anyone. Yeah. All these things that government is doing, as far as I'm concerned, are cosmetic. Now, if you say you're going to shoot up the the minimum wage from 30 to 60, 60 is not enough. Yes. Still cannot sustain the average. Uh, even my security man cannot live off 60,000. Mm. Even my driver that drives me cannot live off 60,000. Mm. It's not possible. And then you have a bunch of Nigerians that are struggling here and there. Mm. There are no jobs. Um, opportunities are very minimal. People are, are literally losing it every day. Yeah. So for me, um, for me, the the uh, uh, minimum wage should be upped to at least one hundred thousand, one twenty thousand. Okay. And again, government doesn't have the money to sustain it. Government doesn't have the money to to um, to uh, sustain it. That's just the truth. In simple terms, government doesn't have the money. In it, but there are certain leakages that must be uh, blocked okay. for for the country to truly prosper. Mm. The the um, volume of oil that is exported, that is recorded officially, mm. is about percent of what is stolen. Mm. Now the government needs to tackle issue of oil theft. Okay. This is the only uh, um, I would say natural resource that we have mm. that truly puts Nigeria on the map. And then you're stealing 70% is being stolen. Now, this um, oil theft that I speak of um, is something that people know that's happening. Okay. These people show up with vessels as big as, uh, as, big as uh, the National Assembly Complex. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me that the Navy doesn't see them. You can't say, tell me that uh, uh, the people that man our waters don't see them. So these are things that the revenue of the country should be increased and uh, uh, for, for these things to, to fly. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about our mining sector. The mining sector, you know, is in a state of comatose. Uh, people with the China people coming into the industry and they're mining very indiscriminately. There is no proper regulatory body that tends to uh, or, 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 uh, uh, watch what is going on. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the, the, the kind of um, uh, uh, mining going on in Zambia. Mm -hmm. the, the visit of gold that we have in Zafara, yet there is so much insecurity and uh, people are dying every day in Zafara. So government needs to be intentional mm -hmm. with what government is doing. Government needs to say hey, this is what we want to do. We have to uh, harness our revenue. We have to harness our, our federal resources. Then we have to pay people, our people have to prosper. If you go to other countries like Dubai, you go to places like Saudi Arabia, you go to places like Bahrain, even the United States, mm -hmm. people, citizens get paid money. People that are employed get paid money. I'm not saying that that is what we should do, but at, at least our people should live a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. the, the absence or total uh, degradation of the entire private sector, uh, of the, the entire middle class in the private sector, within the private sector and the public sector can never really allow our to try to thrive mm. without a middle class an economy we find it difficult to prosper and with all the insecurity in the north in the west mm. in the east mm. the country cannot prosper foreign investors will be uncomfortable they will be ambulant mm. about coming into this so government has to be intentional government has to tackle this problem of security mm. we have to look into the level of unemployment into the level of uh, hardship, suffering, privation, mm. and government has to identify this and tackle these things frontally, tackle these things heads on. Mm. How do we tackle these things? Mm. Power, power, power. When people have power, only to operate electricity, mm. people can set up small shops, people can set up barber shops, mm. people can set up pure water, uh, um, um, pure water companies, bottle water companies, hairdressing, um, hairdressing uh, 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 saloons, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, different things. 
and it's a chain. And then the people that have the uh, have capital can also set up small, small factories, small, small industries, and employ 100 people here, employ 50 people there. And w w when this is going on, the competition will come in, monopoly will be eradicated, annihilated, factories will be popping up, just like it is in China, just like it used to be in Aba in the 80s and in the 70s. So the thing about minimum wage is government may not run away from it, it has to be done. People cannot live off 30,000. There's really, really nothing. If you manage to cook up with 30,000, then you are very economical. You're conservative. Mm. So government has to take these things into cognizance, find a way to up um, the average Nigerian civil servant is getting, find a way to block leakages, block all those areas where monies are being thrown away, if with millions of dollars that, you know, uh, uh, um, embezzled by a bunch of friends and criminal elements in the country mm. get, get into this cartel thing and stop it once and for all that is the only way that these things can be solved okay. uh, Honorable, I know that you are also part of the team from National Assembly that visited some of the refineries we have in this country you know, it's part of the request being made by the organized labor that the refineries should be fixed you gone around, you've seen these uh, facilities. Uh, is there any possibility that these refineries can be, you know, brought back to life for them to start working again? Oh, I did not visit. I'm not a member of the Petroleum Downstream, Upstream, or Middle or uh, Midstream okay. uh, Committee. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit about the issue of uh, our refineries, and I understand that our refineries are, are not functional. Mm -hmm. uh, these were funnies were built in the 60s, and this is 2024. That would take a single person build a refinery, which is yet to, you know, begin to distillate in full capacity. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that if government truly means to um, build new refineries, if the executives truly um, uh, mean to build new refineries, because, you know, some of these refineries, you know how the combustion of uh, pipes and everything are, mm -hmm. It is slightly difficult for a refinery that has been, you know, obsolete, uh, that has been there um, uh, 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 in, a, in a stagnated form to, to operate in full capacity like it would have, you know, if, uh, if it's uh, working from, from inception. I would suggest that those refineries are, are put aside and a proper refinery that can at least uh, find Two, bar two million barrels of oil every day okay. we built situated in different areas worry potakot in parts of mm. um anywhere in lagos government can do this mm. if government is planning to build a road that collects from lagos to Calabar, we're talking three years of naira i'm yet to understand the economic value of that um uh, project but at least government can do things that will help us to harness our revenue generate more money uh, stop importing or um, uh, export oil and then bring them back after a day uh, once again we actually love uh, on the line there uh, let's see if we can really uh, get him back you know to complete uh, you know his uh, submission on the show uh, oh, no, no, can you hear me I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Do you hear me before anything cut off? Okay. Are you hearing me? Uh, yes, I was. Just go ahead now. Yes. So these are the sensitive issues that I believe government should really look uh, intensely into. Uh, we cannot operate the way we are currently living. If this is cosmetic, okay. this is uh, contrived, and it will continue in this fashion, our problem will deepen. So a refinery has to be set up. Mm. Refineries have to be set up. If the government find it, I mean, I don't have any empirical knowledge mm. of you know what this government is doing in that sector based on the fact that I, I am not uh, a member of that okay. But I remember I have conversed with the chairman of uh, the House Committee on Downstream, uh, um, uh, Right Honorable uh, Ikenga, mm. and he has expressed his frustrations how the um, the operatives of uh, the NMPC have uh, been obstinate and recalcitrant.
uh, with uh, uh, identifying fully with the National Assembly. Yeah. Uh, the, most of them have been invited and they've, for some reason, uh, refused to come. Uh, so I, I'm sure certain legislative provisions will be hooked mm. to ensure that they are, they are, you know, uh, uh, that they show up so that they can answer very questions on how some of these issues can be tackled. But I can tell you yeah. that there are, what I believe mm. is that any problem that Nigerian government wants to solve, if Nigerian government truly wants to solve them, they can solve them. Mm. We need more people, good people, we need technocrats, we need people that are God-fearing to get into politics. We need more numbers. Mm. Numbers of people that come out and speak regardless of whose alt is God. We need people that can look whoever it is in charge and say what might be a look and the right thing has to be done. But um people shying away we the loss you know I say the numbers I need mean, more good people that can, you know, say the truth mm -hmm. and stand by the truth. Or for the truth. Mm -hmm. It's it it will continue to continue to put us in a state of uh, 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 uh problems. We are up to more Nigerians mm. to get involved in this thing called politics. Okay, so let's talk about it once again. I know that uh, Aba has several developmental challenges, and you, as a first timer, uh, you are a first time lawmaker. What intervention will you bring on board to address some of the challenges Aba is facing right now? Well, you can already tell that the government is doing quite a lot. I'd like to talk about what the government is doing, regardless of the fact that we're not in the same party. Okay. Well, the government is doing quite a lot to, you know, handle some of the urban areas. I had a meeting, uh, uh, an extensive meeting with um, our government is, as he's handling the urban areas, we are tackling the rural areas. Uh, today, I'm handing, uh, there are a lot of things that we're doing to, um, to help uh, solve some of the infrastructural problems in the city. We have, um, of course, inserted very economic, economically viable roads uh, okay. uh, in the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, some roads in 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 Ngwa Road, uh, inside Ngwa Road, Agu Road, um, Dikenafa, mm -hmm. a bunch of different roads, uh, power line, uh, Imo Avenue, uh, that connects to Oma, Imo Avenue that connects to Oma, um, uh, to see uh, Saint Eugene, to see that these roads. Are, are tackled. Uh, the budget implementation has just begun. I think about 10 months, uh, but maybe one month, I'm sure we'll go full speed. Uh, already, uh, uh, the last administration was not paying um, the counterpart for for for, uh, for you back uh, to uh, continue to uh, reconstruct and renovate and construct our schools. Okay. So our schools were in a very terrible shape. Uh, when we came in into government, uh, I'm, I am a, a committee member in Ubek. I spoke to uh, uh, Hamid, who happens to be the, education, the um, executive secretary of Ubek, and he complained bitterly out of the state's uh, non-involvement in what's going on. Because if you pay that your counterpart funding, the federal government pay counterpart funding, those funds will be injected into the state, and then our schools will be built. Uh, but now we we also um, of course uh, put a lot of schools in the budget. Like right now we're doing the entire Asiana um, uh, primary and uh, central school at uh, Asiana uh, at around uh, what one? Uh, it's a, a, a historic school. Mm -hmm. uh, we literally renovated the entire school of Asiana. And it's I a federal project. project. It's a federal place, my constituency project. Okay. We're doing that. We're renovating the entire school. I mean, we had an approval mm -hmm. to do just one block. Okay. But we, we noticed that if we do the one block, we manage our process, we'll be able to do the entire school. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just do the, the entire blocks. We have about four four blocks of this in this school. Mm -hmm. So we're redoing the entire four blocks, and of course, we're renovating the entire four blocks. We'll find a way to do perimeter fencing, and then possibly we'll will commission will commission mm -hmm. so right now we're doing that we're providing um solar panels uh, uh for the library in abia polytechnic so that you know students can read because education is power mm -hmm. we like i had a conversation with the governor some couple of months ago as soon as i i was learning that we must bring uh, btc boys technical college and girls technical college but what it's supposed to be which is of course technical and vocational institution mm -hmm. is not the regular tertiary 
institution. So what we're doing now, we're equipping those schools with equipments um, so that they can go back to what they used to do, which is, of course, to train people in in one skill or the other. So today, about 12 o'clock, I should be here at the BTC to hand over uh, 10 desktops to help to strengthen their ICT department. You know that the world is going global with uh, ICT and AI, so we intend to see how we can get our, our young people to, you know, uh, get truly engrossed with ICT. It's the future of, of the future of the world. Uh, these are the projects we have. We have a bunch of, we have close to a thousand street lights. Uh, solar street lights that we are supposed to distribute in sensitive areas of Abba, mm -hmm. where AT has become pervasive, uh, to ensure that at least in the night, at night people can see what is going on. We've acquired a grader, which we intend to always use to build those roads that I and the governor has confessed very intensely to see how we can, um, work harmoniously to, to implement in, in, in Abba. We have, uh, about 10 informers, uh, that we inserted in the budget. Uh, the approval has been given. Uh, hopefully, when the budget is funded, we'll have enough transformers to dish up to different neighborhoods that are currently suffering uh, darkness and within those neighborhoods to see how we can alleviate the situation in those uh, areas. So we, we have a bunch of different things that we have already uh, started doing. Uh, you know, we're just about four or five months in the in the National Assembly. You might recall that uh, we had to mandate through the courts yeah. and we were sworn in uh, in late November mm -hmm. uh, worked for like three weeks and then went for uh, recess for Christmas and came back on the 5th February mm -hmm. so since that 5th we've been trying to make friends we've been trying to um, build contacts to see how we can um, attract different different institutions to the city okay. but I assure you between now and one year at least 70 to 80 percent of the projects that we have done mm -hmm. uh, put inserted in the budget Will become will come to oh, okay. that happens we will invite you to come out also take coverage all right so uh, honorable you have actually made a partial assessment to governor alex who is a uh, one year in office now are there areas you think the governor can improve on in terms of governance of the state well the truth is i've really taken time to ponder very intensely about the government's actions and inactions mm -hmm. And uh, I'm yet to find an area where I can truly critique. Um, the area that I can critique, that I should critique, mm -hmm. is um, I really don't know the area I should critique. Mm -hmm. The governor is, is intentional with what he's doing. He's tackling the very foundational and fundamental problems of our which is, of course, our infrastructure, the, our infrastructure in a terrible state mm -hmm. and it's exactly what the government is doing that people will complain oh the government is not distributing money this man is a banker this man is a conservative mm -hmm. the man is a, a financial guru mm -hmm. and no society is just distributing money and sharing money it's, the whole sharing money thing mm -hmm. has been a concept that African leaders you know are which put Africa a state where it is today. But if you provide infrastructure, provide basic amenities, businesses will naturally thrive. Mm -hmm. You know, the regular old politicians will say, let them bring money and share. When you do infra infrastructure, also do stomach infrastructure. Yes, stomach infrastructure, infrastructure is good when you are doing empowerment. There are certain empowerments that the government can do, like maybe providing vehicles uh, and asking to run uh, 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 have access to those vehicles or, uh, as high purchase, mm -hmm. maybe provide grants, uh, small, small uh, these packages for people, maybe women selling mm -hmm. or men selling, but it hasn't gotten to that, to that, I, I don't think, I think governor sort of has a plan on what he wants to do, mm -hmm. tackle the problem of tackle the problem of infrastructure, tackle the problem of amenities, tackle the problem of education, tackle the problem of healthcare, and then possibly to do these other but I've, I've really taken my time to think to dissect what he's doing diagnose his actions and i can't sit here okay and tell you this is what man is doing that isn't hello okay uh, i think uh, I, I really need to guess uh, uh, the honorable back on the line okay Hello, Honorable, can you hear me?
Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I got what you said. But finally, before I let you go, um, you've been sitting with the governor for some time now. And listening to what you have said, you've spoken so highly of the governor. I mean, you've been you've been seen around with the governor. Are there plans for you to cross over to the Labour Party? Or well, this is um, uh, an appeal that literally everyone that I know has been making. Uh, everybody sees me and tells me, "Oh, go to the Labour Party." You see, when I was running for this office, um, we preached for good governance. We didn't preach for party politics. We preach for good governance. And uh, good governance is what Abia is in. Uh, Alex Oti, Dr. Alex Oti is a man that has, you know, done a bunch of different things that Abia, as Abians haven't seen before. Mm. Less than one year, you can see the level of development the state has uh, recorded. I it's right that we please him is right that we say to the world this is what is going on in the state regardless of the fact that we don't belong to the same party uh if he begins to deviate or if he begins to drift you know me i'm the first person in this state that started to critique or criticize very very intensely the last government i'm the one that demystified the people that uh were around the last because know that the people were not serious we saw that the people were not doing well regardless of the fact that at that time we were even in the same party and then we all began to shift i think i'm the main i'm the first stakeholder senior stakeholder in states that left the party very openly mm -hmm. you know and um which of course impelled and propelled other members of um, the pdp back then to begin to leave the party so i am a member of the all progressive grand alliance abga and uh, that I still remain for now. Okay. If alliances be to foster, mm. then um, we, we can't take that decision. I mean, uh, different political parties are reaching out, APC is reaching out, APC is reaching out, mm. um, and uh, of course we are seeing what the governor is doing in the Labour Party. Mm. Uh, B is also having talks with um, um, Kwan Kwaso and I believe Atiku Abubaka are trying to see how they can form an alliance. Mm. So for now, I think politics, this politics, this is time for governance. Mm. This is time, I mean, I just got in barely five, four or five months ago. So the, uh, starting now to do politics is a distraction, just like I and Dr. Alex Oti have discussed very extensively, okay. that we cannot do politics now, that we should work and serve the people. If, if by the time I am able to do 80 roads, I am able to grid maybe 1,000 roads, I am able to build about maybe 100 schools, I am able to provide people transformers, empower people, move people abroad to go for scholarships, do all these things. I might do all these things and empower over 100, 200 millionaires. Then we can begin to talk politics. And when and you, things will begin to align themselves. And when mm. when do you think you can achieve all that before you can now start the realignment? Well, between now and two thousand and late two thousand five, early two thousand and six, okay. we would have known, you know, from the things we have done, mm. how far we've gone. The people can now decide. Did Alex Ipecho Rachel but he did do well for the people of Abano and Basalt. Abano and Basalt is a very sensitive uh, constituency. Mm. I can tell you very definitively and on a quickly that Abano and Basalt is the most important constituency okay. in Abia State, if not the Southeast. Mm. So it is important mm. that we are not distracted. It's important by our voice. It's heard in the National Assembly, which I can attest that you have been hearing. Mm. It is important that we build um, um, relationships across board. APC, you, you, you know that I speak and we're, we're, we're quite uh, uh, friendly with one another. Mm. I and the governor were quite friendly with one another. These are individuals that I believe play a sensitive role towards the development of Abanot and Abasal. And it is only right mm. that I maintain a very cordial relationship with these individuals. Okay. Let me sincerely thank you. The member representing our Bamba Mountain South Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives, Honorable Alexi Kwechi. Thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much there. I think uh, it's actually time for us to open the phone lines so you can be part of this discussion. The numbers to call are 080 8182 or zero eight one one six zero five two nine four nine. Also send your SMS on zero nine zero 
0541080289. Hello, good morning. Hello, Mr. Dimeka. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, my honorable. Let's uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is, this is Joseph Okitokova. And I'm coming from the uh, Ijeko. Okay. Sir, my name is from your radio station. I'm aware of it. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. Sir, I, I want to be very total. Hmm. Let me ask the honorable if he thinks that uh, the South East has been quite peaceful this period. If what happened in Abu on the South East would have been a, a set. And then he answered the way he answered. But I, I beg to disagree. See, Abu is not the clear to this day. We read in the news yesterday that a, a, a person in the state was attacked yesterday, which is more difficult to attack a police station or to attack an army five persons and um, staying in the car on the road, which is more difficult. So about is not peculiar. I just think it's not peculiar. We don't have to put as if it has not happened before in the South East. You understand? Okay. So, and also, I want to encourage my honorable police. If they want to look in any world, really, and solve this problem, mm. let them go to the military and tell them to stop the, to stop the harassment of people in the South East. People are getting agitated and they are angry. Right. And this is Thank actually you. a result of it. And we cannot remove it from the fact. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking with us there. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Don't kiss you guys for How are you doing? Let me just appreciate on the line this paragraph. This paragraph, he said that this is for governors, not the term for British. So I think that's a welcome now for your honor. The honor of the sister aspect. Because this time around, if you have to, the time yourself, but you have to give yourself that people. They tell you that they are going to work for them. But people from governors, what about you know, jumping to a party together or uh, in the margin issue, in fact, I want to make a one, you see, to, you know, uh, hit back. So, uh, but again, uh, but the kind of, uh, they, they have a plan for the finale. Because they are supposed to jump in, in fact, of, uh, let's just give you an example of uh, uh, body. Every, uh, 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 past orders of the body, they are functioned. There's a particular one that the crucial and the tertiary, you touch it, you eat it, anything affected with that negatively, they look like I. So this is the final that when they will now realize that they leave the seat after the final, I've got a lot of things that happen now, this is the issue of a level, this issue of a high price of the prison. This issue of uh, 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 unemployment. Thank you, All right. Thank you so much, uh, Don Casey Guy, for real. I think you've made your point. 0 or 0811605 To our SMS, okay, to our WhatsApp page now. Um, this one is coming from uh, Kalicho Baini Kwan. He said, for me, the issue of national minimum wage, I see another political strategy adopting after seven days as federal government will change the dance steps politically. The Nigerian Labour Congress should be discussing how price of things will be regulated, especially food and fuel. Okay, thank you so much, Kelly Cho by Nikwan. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Dimika. Good morning, Abbas. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the boss from Government College. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, first of all, uh, uh, the way uh, all of us spoke there is spoken very wonderful, you know. The uh, issue of uh, Kanye speaking in Abba for me is very, very bad. There is not any game for that. Mm. You know, when you are trying to call for an investor to come and invest in the state of your country, any country that, that there is no peace, that, there is no foreign investor that come, you know, and invest. That is the reality. Mm. And secondly, you spoke about net Nepal power is very, very important. So any, any, any businessman wants to come and invest in this country, they are supposed to say that the Nigerian economy is a generator running economy. That's the reality. You can prepare for your listeners and you know how much are you going to spend for the day ahead of them, you know? So that's why we are calling for labor. It's not more than only minimum wage. 
Never have to look into, okay, it's not good now. Everything is too higher. Now, if you are a dealer of tomato, it's to import your tomato for just to go higher now. Yeah. Before you are paying 800,000 for that production, now you are going to pay one for eight or one for six million. Yeah. Or you are going to go higher. Yeah. Okay, what are you supposed to look into this? So let's okay. talk about that problem with this point. That is what we are looking for. All right. Thank you so much, Abbas, for your contribution there. Prince Obuna on our Facebook page said, Good morning, Honorable Alex Ikweche. Uh, I am Prince from Umwahe. The truth is that Honorable Ikweche understands the problem of the workers and the economic challenges facing Nigeria as a result of revenue leakage. We are so proud of having him in the National Assembly. If Nigeria can stop the stealing of food and illegal mining activities of foreigners operating all over the north, I don't think we will be saying that Nigerian government does not have the money to pay living wage. Thank you so much, Prince Subona. Let's see if we can take our final call on the show. Hello? Good morning. Hello, good morning, Mr. Presenter. Good morning. My name is Ginika. What's your name? My name is Michael. Okay. I'm calling you for, I'm calling you for the end I, I want to thank the governor of his new world. Mm. Really appreciate what he's doing in others. We've never seen this kind before. But okay. then, even but there are people that are working, he's doing well for them. There are also people that work for him during the election. So, uh, please, what's the governor to remember the most? Because these people, they are not in government. Mm. They are not a, a politician as well. So, he's to remember us also. Okay. Anyhow, so that we can also benefit from the government. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for speaking with us. I think the concerned authorities, they must have heard you. And I hope they will act appropriately. Thanks to all of you who called in and who sent in your messages, even on our Facebook page. Thank you so much. May God bless you. My name is Ginika Oluaha. Let's do this again on Friday. God willing, Wisdom Thomas will be here to do justice to that. Let's keep praying for our state and Nigeria to become great. I'll see you again.